Nerds, welcome back. I'm Britt. This is my channel, Britt Riderly. It's a book and author tube where I talk about the intersections of literature and culture. And this is me trying to see something. I want to see if I can actually talk about a book briefly. Now, not briefly, briefly. This is a new series that I am calling Girl, What You Reading? I'm the girl. You don't have to be. Um, I... If you know me at all, especially if you see me mostly on my Friday sprints, you know that when I talk about a book, I'm getting into it. I'm not talking about the synopsis. I'm talking about, girl, I can't believe how she did Michael on page. Da, 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 da. You know what? I had a cousin who I go in and around. We having a whole buffet over a single scene. You feel me? So that's not really like I, I have no problem with that. Doing that in my like rebellious reading report, though, would make those jokes like long, like an hour long. And I don't want that. So I thought maybe I can try once a week to check in on what I'm reading and have a little time to be like, here's where I am in this book. Here's where I am in this book so that I don't feel the pressure of cutting out all of my interaction with these materials. That means so much. So for my first girl, what you're reading? I am reading Withered Rose by... Velicity Elaine. So I'm just going to read this synopsis so that I don't have to tell you what it's about. I can just get into where I am with the story. So this is book one in the Withered Rose trilogy, and it is a dark Christian romance. So I'm just going to be looking and scooping for more. So what happens when a Christian woman and a mafia boss fall in love? Their, pre their passion breeds chaos. Rosa and Amory have no business getting involved with one another, but they also have no choice. Rosa is Amory's captive bride, kidnapped and forced to marry him as payment for his brother's debt. All she wants is to live a life free of crime and violence, but now she's shackled to the most dangerous man in New York City. Only God can help her now. Meanwhile, Amory is looking forward to having a beautiful young bride, but Amory, but Amory is a mafia underboss and Rosa is a Christian woman. Her faith is standing right between them and he hates that. The sting of her refusal to marry him runs deep, but something in Amory feels drawn to Rosa despite their differences. Maybe she is the calm to his storm. Maybe he is the chaos she she, she secretly craves. May, whatever the case, they're in it together. So there's a disclaimer that Withered Rose is a Christian story. There is no vulgar, vulgar foul language and no graphic scenes of sex, violence, or gore. However, our characters are members of the mafia, which may present an environment some readers consider triggering. Topics such as gang violence, abuse, and distribution of illegal substances will be introduced throughout the book. This novel is appropriate for mature audiences for ages 17 and up. So where I am with it is I... Where I am with it is enjoying myself. I am enjoying myself. Um, it's so interesting to see a Christian woman have qualms. I have read my share of mafia romances. I have read um, Kenya Wright's Lion and the Mouse series. Um, sheesh, Casimir and Emily. Wow. I... I I read like four of, I think there may be six books in the, in the series. I need to go back. I was pissed off and that's why I stopped, but I need to go back and see if they're okay. That's, that's a different girl with you read right now. Um, so I have read them. I am familiar with the subgenre and there's a lot, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of sex, there's a lot of cussing, there's a lot of violence, like there's a lot of the things that I said I'm not trying to read anymore. And so seeing a Christian writer say, I'm going to engage in this genre with a Christian character, I'm like, do tell. How are we going to do that? And I think how she's doing it is being honest about the qualms that a Christian woman would have being in that life. So she was born, her her parents were in the mafia. So she was, she, she was sort of born into it. And women in the mafia in this world, I don't know what it's really like. Um, women in this world, in the mafia, they're just trophies. Um, for all but the black mafia, interestingly, in the, in the black mafia, the wives of the bosses are as involved in the business as the men and not by force like they just don't have their wives as trophies they are partners all the other mafias the italian mafia the Rom the russian mafia the german mafia all the other mafias are not like that and so i'm just like hmm 
kill us, but it's also crime. So like, okay. But anyway, Rosa's um, parents were in the mother she was born into, but she never wanted to be. Her mother, who was black, her father was um, Italian. He married her mother to bridge the Italian and the black mafia so that he could be more powerful. Um, but her mom was like, I am still a woman of faith. I want my daughter to be a woman of faith. And so Rosa grew up really loving the Lord and really not wanting to be in that life. And so now that she's in it with Amory, he's not understanding why. I don't think I'm the worst gangster out there. Like, am I the worst? Yes, I'm the baddest. But am I like a bad man to a wife? No, I don't, I don't think I am. Why won't she like she won't even sleep with him? And so that's the where I am right now. And I think I'm 70 something percent in. They they got married at like the 50 percent mark or so. And she has we not weaseled. She has out of like at least two scenarios where he's tried to have sex with her. And he's like, yo, we're married. Like it's not a sin. Am I missing something? Um, but for her, she's like, it's not that like marriage is a sacrament i'm not i'm not in love with you i was forced to marry you which is already terrible enough but to have to to give my body to someone who i don't love and who doesn't love me i'm not doing that um and and also even though she is as the book goes on more and more attracted to him she does like she it's giving purity culture vibes where she has been taught say no, say no, say no for so long. She doesn't really know how to say yes. And I think that's such an honest thing because so many Christian women are like, I do not know how to say yes to sex. I haven't been taught that. And that's real. That's hard enough for a Christian man to understand. Amory, who is not a Christian, has no idea what the issue is. Because he's like, shouldn't that be enough for you that we're married? Ain't that what y'all Christians be waiting for? Let's get buck wild. And she's like, buck wild? Well, I never. So I'm just, I'm enjoying the fact that as much as we are in the mafia culture, we're also very much in like the Christian culture and like cultural difficulties that women have around these things like sex right and marriage and so it's I'm really really enjoying where I am I feel like something is about to happen to force um to force them to really reckon with like fundamentally I think Rosa is responding in her heart to I don't want to engage in the physical act of sex before we have some sort of intimacy beyond sex like I we have to be intimate before sex or I can't do it with you and Amory doesn't understand that and so they had a moment last night where she and he was like okay just sleep with me and she was like no he was like just in my bed like let's just sleep like let's just snooze together and he held her and she was like this is the first time I feel like we've experienced and she's like this this you holding me is so intimate that she almost like couldn't take it but he was like I'm not letting you go so wiggle around and figure out how to get comfortable because figure it out um and so as she's sitting there sitting with her discomfort and figuring it out then she's like this is such an intimate thing now she hasn't really processed that fully but me as the reader and as someone who like has done a lot of study around like God's design for sex sexuality marriage all these different things I'm like you're tiptoeing you're tiptoeing you're tiptoeing over there so I'm excited that they have experienced this moment of intimacy together and I suspect something is going to happen where she sees how much he really cares for her and she'll start connecting the dots that like your husband does love you she's very much on the mission of like i need to win him to christ um but she's just not going to be able to do that until he he thinks that she loves him and she doesn't right now he knows that he's just re he's reading the bible trying to figure out what her issue is but i think when he knows that she loves him or when she does love him and he sees that then he will be more interested in her faith like for his own like for it for his own genuine purposes as opposed to i'm just trying to read this book to figure out what your problem is right and so she's very much in like first peter when peter is talking to the wives of women who have been converted to christianity but their husbands are still in paganism and he tells them basically you're gonna have to win your husband to 
the faith by your faith. He will not go to church with you. He's not going to read these epistles about who this guy Jesus was, but through your faith and the love you show him and the respect, even as you're you're coming to a relationship with God, that will intrigue him. You can win him. You're, you're going to have to be the walking epistle. So she is figuring out how to be a walking epistle, but in the epistles, there's love. Like Paul Peter, James, like the apostles are writing to these congregations around um, around the world, the Roman Empire, a lot of, but anyway, around like Asia Minor, modern day Turkey, they are writing to these places, Jerusalem, all these places because they loved the people. She doesn't love him yet. She loves God and she's like, fine, I'll take this assignment. But she doesn't love the person that she's laboring towards yet and he can feel that and so he's just like you know i'll read this book to try to figure out what you need to uh split them legs but beyond that no thank you i'm not really curious i think he'll get curious when she loves him um but that's what i'm reading right now i'm 70 something person and and i'm enjoying how <clears throat> unrushed it is i'm enjoying that um Rosa is like noting that she is physically attracted to this man. Like Christian romance doesn't mean that you don't admit that you feel attraction. Like God is the one who made our bodies, including our genitals. He's the one that created sex. Like these things are not evil. They're just meant to exist in a context that is safe and supportive as opposed to just like lawlessly. And there's a, there's a point where in clinging to the law of it, you still don't understand that it was made to be pleasurable and enjoyable and safe. And Rosa doesn't know how to access sexual pleasure. And she doesn't feel safe. Like it's the mafia. So I, I think swirling all those things together is really interesting. So I appreciate that Velicity Elaine is not like, oh, they had sex in the first chapter or like the night that they got married. Would they though? If she does not feel safe and if she has not experienced intimacy with him before sex, would she though? And she doesn't. So it's really, really exciting to see a realistic pacing of how a Christian woman would go through this this mafia scenario in a very like worldly evil context, how she is navigating herself with values, with integrity, right? So girl, that's what I'm reading. Girl or God, whomever you may be. That's what I'm reading right now. Withered Rose by Felicity Elaine. Would I recommend it if you like what I just said? Yes, I would. I definitely think it's worth a read to figure out if you may be into dark Christian romance. Like if you love Christian romance and you're like, but I do, you know, I am a Christian. I don't want to be reading all these super erotic sexual themes. Like I don't want to just be reading darkness. I want to see how a Christian navigates darkness. I definitely think that you should read Withered Rose and see if maybe this is a subgenre that can give you what you want without compromising your integrity. Um, all right. I will see y'all in the next one, I guess. We'll see how this goes. Let me know if you have heard of Elicity Elaine, if you've read her books, if you are interested in reading Withered Rose, let me know. Or if you have like a favorite thing, a favorite part that's, that's intriguing to you that I talked about, what was that favorite thing? All right, a bevy of comment prompts. Anyway, bye.